Now, a quick one. I want to say something. For all the married men here, for all the married men, listen. I just discovered a new technique that will save your marriage forever. It happened to me last week, and I didn't believe it was going to work, but it worked. I went out, was hanging out with some people. I don't want to mention whether it's man, men or women. It's not your business for now. But I was hanging out. We started drinking. And you know that kind of thing that you just say, okay, let's go. We now chill somewhere. The next thing, I slept off. Woke up at about 2 a.m., looked at my phone, 47 missed calls from my wife. Eh? Now I say my own, don't finish. And one thing about men, for the women, you better know this. Anytime you are calling your, you call your husband, call your husband, he no pick up. You now call the friend around 2 a.m. The friend will not pick up. Instead, the friend will call the man first. Bro, where you day? Your wife, they call me. Make her know it, I go tell her. That, that, so women, just forget it. You want to call your dear. No, they won't pick up your call. So, I now saw that two of my friends had called me. Me, I don't pass out. 2.30 a.m. Do you know what I did? Try it. It works like magic. I drove myself from the hotel straight to a police station. Tell the police people to arrest me. I paid them. They arrest me. I can't call my wife. See, baby, they arrested me. She can't call, come bail me. So I played with the police people and told them that if, they, if she asks them what thing happened, make them tell her and say, one man insult my wife. So I vex, fight the man. The man now arrested me. So my wife came to the police station, honey, what happened? I said, don't mind what's stupid. They just said, this is your husband. This is your husband. And I, because of you, now you make a day prison. So, eh? What did happen? I saw my wife just happy. But bail me, we go house. If that one does not work, if it's too extreme, once you wake up around 3 a.m., if you can't go to the police station, go to a hospital and check yourself in. <laughs> Tell them they put two drip for your hand. <laughs> <laughs> now your wife go rush, come, say, honey, what happened? Hey, this is my husband, you overwork yourself. Then, another one, I'm giving, I'm giving tricks to all the men here. Maybe, then later I'll talk about the women. For the men, another one you should do. Let me tell you, Whenever all these things that you people are doing, you are locking your phone, you are wasting your time. Locking your phone with your fingerprint. All these are new Samsung and iPhone. You are wasting your time. Women are smart. When you put your fingerprint, you think you've locked your phone. Lie, lie. What thing happen when you sleep? Once you sleep, you just carry your finger, unlock the phone. So all those fingerprinting is rubbish. You are wasting your time where, where. So what you do, if you want to be using fingerprint to lock your phone, as you won't sleep, Saturday suck finger. Put that finger for your mouth, sleep. I'm telling you. Then, another one. You know women, women are smarter. Do you know that women have code words? Do you know? Women have code words. I'm telling you. I found out the hard way. My wife went out. Came back around 2 a.m. Hey! I vexed. I said, honey, why are you coming back by this time of the night? I'm, I'm sorry. Around... 10 a.m., the friends that she went out with, one of them now called her. And I made a stupid mistake. I said, baby, pick that call and put it on speaker. I want to hear what happened last night. She said, honey, are you serious? I said, yes, put it on speaker. Let me in the year what happened last night. Now she pick up the call, put it on speaker. The friend, Christabel, your caller, Elsie, baby, how are you? My wife now answered, I'm fine, Jare. Jare was the code word. I did not know because as Krista Bell heard Jare, she changed the whole thing. She said, hmm, Elsie, last night you really impressed me. When those boys were throwing bottles of champagne to your table, you turned it back at them and told them you have a husband and you, oh man, I wish I can be like you. As she did talk, my head won't blow. <laughs> men, we do not have code words, but men, we have the ability to find out your geographical location before we can start talking. So, a week later, I went out, came back, not too late, about like 11 p.m., Around 10, about 8 o'clock, my friend now called me. My wife did the same thing to me. She said, honey, pick the call and put it on speaker. I want to hear what you did last night. I said, are you serious? He said, yes, put it on speaker. Now I put it on speaker. Boa! Buchi, my friend, as the call coming, I pick up the call. Buchi said, bright ho! I said, Buchi, how now? He said, he did. The first question for men, Buchi asked, where you did? That's meant for you. Where you did. 
But men, we are not patient. I answered him, I day house. The next question, where your wife day? <laughs> and my wife day here. Oh. And I answered him clearly, my wife day here. Instead for the guy to shut up and change the topic, the next thing, the idiot, I said, oh yeah, move, 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 move. Before I go, even walk out, go fight, you don't start to talk. Oh boy, those babes yesterday night, eh? That's the problem with men. We are not um, patient. Now, now, um, Oga, you are lucky. If I had read your, your biography, I, I don't know if this guy get money like this now. But I like, I like him. He did not prize me. Although some men, they go, you call your basket, man, come on, bring the money down. No, as I just told him the fee, he just said, okay. He paid. Straight up. Some men, especially those men in Lagos, wicked people, rose rich ones. Wicked, Titan won't kill them. One called me, called me directly. Hello, know the way they talk. Hello, how are you? My name is Chief Anyamu Obina. Uh, my daughter is getting married. Can you come to my house? I mean, my man, I was like, who be this one now? So, uh, come to my house. I live in Banana Island. As I hear Banana Island, I don't enter Moto. I got to his house. If you see house, the house big. As I reached, the guy was seated outside of his house. I walked up to him. And he said, basket mouth. My daughter is getting married and I want you to be the MC. How much do you charge? I said, sir, three million. Basket mouth. Basket mouth. Three million for what? I'm not saying you should bring food just to come and MC. I looked the man, looked the house. Which kind of titan you won't get? I said, sir, that's my fee. It's three million naira. The man said, basket. Look over there. What can you see? I said, turn, look. I said, sir, I don't understand. What can you see? I see about six cows. I said, sir, I can see cows. How many can you see? I say six. Basket mouth. You see those six cows? All of them together. They are just 1.7 million. Are you a cow? <laughs> Big men, they, they can abuse person. I'm telling you, that's why I told myself, I must hustle. I go hustle, die. Moga, Mr. Ennis. Moga, <laughs> this guy, money long ago. Ah. Man, no talk. I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to talk too much. <laughs> I don't want to talk too much. Oh, well, we're still having some more people coming in, which is one of the reasons why I will not be able to tell. Oga, you don't have a seat yet? Okay, okay. But I promise you, it will be a fun evening. We've been having slight issues with the sound, but it will be resolved anytime from now. You know, when you, when you say, Oga, sir, when big men come, Oga, where well sir? How are you doing, sir? So how are you doing? Just talk to the microphone. Let them hear you. I'm very well, thank you. You hear big man voice? When big men, they talk. Hello, let me even... Let me... Okay, how are you doing, sir? Very well. Okay, that's not your real voice. That's not your real voice. <laughs> okay, how are you doing, sir? Fine, thank you. <laughs> you people are faking it. I know, the, I know all of my voice thick. Where, where? All those big men with thick voice. I don't know how they do it like Mr. M, Dr. Michael Denugard. Have you heard that man talk? What? He doesn't talk too much. If you hear him, you will not understand one single thing. The guy don't chop money. Money don't block in truth. I went, I went to his house for a meeting. He was giving his steward instructions. The guy just said, <coughs> the steward went there. And I was listening. He was like, <coughs> the guy said, yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. <coughs> I, I said, what did you say? Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. At the end of the meeting, I called the steward. Oh, God, come. What did chairman tell you? He said, oh, God, I know you're anyone. No. <laughs> uh, as you talk, finish. I go do everything within the house. Mm. Big men. Big men. Big men voice. And they come. Again, well, I see some. Oh, God, good. Oh, God, your real voice. Your real voice. Good evening, sir. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing okay. Uh, he said, that's the voice I'm talking about. But, Paco, my brother, how are you? I'm okay. My brother, I should know your voice with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, okay, there are some people I cannot tell to keep quiet. I don't know who they pay me at the end of the day. Uh, <laughs> if I go talk now, I won't check where they expect next week. You'll cancel. Uh, okay, you can help me tell them. Uh, no, I'm not saying I talk. Oh. No, don't put me for trouble. Okay, the celebrant said you should sit down. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Morgan, sir. I heard you are the one that is paying me for Mr. Collins' uh, father's uh, 25th. Are you the one? No, no, no three, I'll give you a discount, 10% off. Moga, 
You are too much. Did you hear a voice? Say something. It's saying a tati. Hey! Hey! Oh, God. <laughs> you know, is this kind of voice like I used to threaten a woman? If, you're, if, you're, if, you, are, if you are trying to take charge of your wife, now this kind of voice, you know what I say? Baby, I've warned you several times not to be playing with all those girls. I don't, I don't understand. You're giving yourself a bad name. Then a woman go to fear. Honey, I'm so sorry. Where you go with this kind of tiny voice? Baby, I don't need to tell you. I'll make it. Then they shut up yet. <laughs> you know, women, I will speak for my, my wife. When I got married to my wife, I never, I was trying to get in touch with you so you come for my wedding, but you were not available. But they, they, my 50th anniversary, they, no, 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 no. My 50th anniversary is this uh, November. Yes, I've been married for five years, yes. I don't try. So it's, um, when I got married, I cried. I never believed that. I, I didn't realize that I loved my wife that much. But when the pastor said, and now, welcoming the bride. My wife just walked in. The sun from her back now made her look like an angel as her turn. See wedding gown. See the glitter with the... Oh, if you see wedding gown. She went to Pronovia. I don't know if you heard of Pronovia. Me, look, let me, okay, for all the people that have not gotten married, all the guys, if your wife, your wife to be, tell you someone to go buy wedding gown for Pronovia, no go. Uh -huh. The way you know that you are in trouble, when you enter Pronovia, they offer you champagne. <laughs> Don't drink it, oh. <laughs> so she just entered. She was looking like an angel. As I turned, saw my wife. Tears. I didn't know how the thing came out. Tears just started coming out because she was looking so beautiful. And I thought to myself, so this is the woman you're going to spend the rest of your life with? And I was so fulfilled. My manager, who was my best man, was upset and was telling me, Brad, Brad, clean your, clean your tears. Are you okay? And people were there. But after the wedding, my friends came to me and said, Bright, are you okay? Why would you be crying in front of your, your family, friends? They cry like small people. Are you okay? You're supposed to be a hard man. I looked at them and said, My brother, if you know how much that wedding gown cost me. <laughs> the wedding gown, I think it was about 2,300 pounds at that time. We, did rent, we are renting it out now. So we are generating money back. <laughs> uh, <we> are <laughs> I can't shout. No. I know the funny thing. I'm not like, I know Mr. Um, uh, doctor, sorry. Do Ichie. <laughs> is an, Ichie doctor <laughs> is an accountant, very brilliant man. I read his story. And truth be told, I respect people that are brilliant because I'm not, I'm not brilliant in terms of reading and all those stuff. No, in school, I wasn't brilliant. I know, I was sharp. There's a difference between being brilliant and being sharp. As a sharp guy, like for instance, I don't know how many people did what they call microchips. Where's the professor? Have they left? Have they left? Microchip, for all the people that did not go to good school, microchip is what you call, when you, you, you hear that they are asking a question in a particular subject, you now go and copy it and put on a paper and fold it and hide it. Okay, did you hear about it? Uh -huh, microchip. For the people we know, they know. Okay, did you do microchip in school? And you, even if you did say, you won't say yes now. Me, I need a shame. I don't have shame. I did it. But the problem with doing microchip is when you now enter the exam hall hoping that that's the question they are going to ask, that question now not come out. You're in trouble. So what do I do? Me, I didn't have to just copy just that, you know, define um, um, economics or demand and supply. I will now just copy only that one. No, I used to go and copy the full textbook and put it at different location on my school uniform. But the problem is when you copy the full textbook, how will you know where the particular subject is? Now that's how you know that I'm a sharp man. Do you know what I do? I will now write out a table of content. <laughs> now hide it where I can locate it. So when I enter the exam, or they say define scale of preference. I just bring table of content. Look, um, scale of preference, left socks. <laughs> that's how you know that someone is sharp. I know be crying mode. And you know, the funny thing is that I tell people most times, in when until I got married, okay, are you married? How, how long have you been married? How many years now? 10, 20? No, up to five years. Ah, we've been mates. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, I look at like, madam, sorry, I didn't ask. How long have you guys been married? 20 years this year. Wow, 19 years, so next year is 20. Okay, are you going to invite? Definitely, I'll, even if you don't invite me, I'll do it for free. 
Ah, no, no. I get it. If I do something for you for free, don't take it to know that I'm collecting something bigger later. Now, when I see people that are married, I respect them so much because the thing is that marriage is, people don't think that marriage, they look at these small, small the children running up. Marriage is very, very, it's delicate. When I got married, my eye clear. I tell people most times, there are things you do not know that when you now get married, you will not start understanding. For instance, my wife, my wife is sharp. My wife one day slapped me and started crying. <laughs> Madam, you know that thing before? You slap your husband, I can't cry. She slapped me, can't cry. I make on the pet and say, baby, what happened? She said, you made me slap you. <laughs> I said, okay, honey, I'm sorry. I, I won't make you slap me again. <laughs> my wife, not a gangster. <laughs> I'm telling you. Now, finally, ladies and gentlemen, okay, we're going to cut the cake very soon. We're going to be cutting the cake, and we're going to be having a toast, and then we are going to party. We have a lot to drink, and I think we still have more food, but I think it's too late to still... Oga, okay, how is it going, sir? Well done. You know, when um, Nigerians, one thing we are known for, Nigerians, we ask the most, of, we know the answer to the question, but we we'll still ask you. I saw somebody, and I made the mistake. I saw somebody say, ah, my brother, you did chop, and the guy was eating. Nigerians, we ask that question all the time. First question, Nigerians. Ah, basket match, you don't come. And they are seeing me coming in. The one that killed me the most, I was boarding an aircraft. The pilot came out and saw me, hey, basket match. How are you? You're a comedian. Yeah, nice to meet you. You're very funny. So you're flying with us. I said, yes, sir. Obviously, I'm flying with you. Oh, nice. Yeah, you're a very great guy. So where are you flying to? I said, pilot, you don't know where would they go? <laughs> Questions. Nigerians, we ask the most annoying questions. One of my friends saw me. Hey, basket mouth. I said, my brother, how now? He said, man, congrats. So I heard that your sister got, uh, gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. I said, no. He said, hey, what is she born? I said, not good. If no be boy, what other option do you have? <laughs> Nigerians, oh God. the one that killed me was one billboard I saw in VI. They wrote, they said, if you do not know how to read and write, call this number. <laughs> So people are stupid, though. But the one, the worst one, I'll tell you this one. This one happened, it happened I think, okay, like some months ago. Listen to this one. I was watching Chelsea and Man You Play. One guy walked into the house. Hey, basket, how far now? Ah, now they watch football. I look at him, I say, yes. Hey, who they play? I say, Chelsea and Man You. Hey, we be Chelsea. I said, the ones in blue. Which one can't be Man You? I was patient. I said the ones in red. Eh? So where Chelsea they play from? I said from left to right. Eh? What about my you? I said from right to left. This guy was annoying me, but I was trying to be calm. I said, eh, what did be scores? I said zero zero. Eh? Who can they lead? <laughs> oh no, I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> some people are stupid. There are some girls behind you. You want to withdraw. If you cover the screen, they won't know how much you are withdrawing. Now lie. Girls, they can tell how much you are withdrawing by the sound of the money coming out. I, now I'm telling you, what you just put like 3K, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they won't even look at you, they just throw away face, go one side. But when you put like 20K and they yeah, <laughs> you hear yeah, from back, hello. I'm telling you, if you need me, I'm a madman now. I was trying to withdraw money from Fidelity Bank. <laughs> I was trying to withdraw money. As I was standing, six beautiful girls just came behind me. They wanted to use the ATM. Ah! And I wanted to only collect 5K. I wanted to go and watch a movie. As I see these girls, I said, no, 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 I can't fold my hand. And I withdrew 20K. Boop, 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 boop. From my back, I just said, hi, are you basket mouth? I said, yes, oh, you're quite funny, you know. I said, thank you. I said, ah, 20K, don't bring compliments. I said, no, I'm collecting another 20K. I'm going to collect number this time around. Boop, boop, boop. The next thing. Um, anyway, um, are you like busy? Are you doing anything around here today? I said, yeah, I just want to go see a movie. Oh, quite nice. I said, okay. Jeez, don't they enter. Another 20K. Okay, basket. I hope I'm not being too pushy or forward. But can I get your number or something? I look at him, I say, number, don't enter. I give a number, collect number. 60K from 5K where I want. 
I said, no, Ma, collect BB pin and even secure date. Another 20K. She said, um, do you use BB? I said, yes, we exchange BB pin. 80K. And I went for 100. As I do the 100, she just said, and why are you doing this? Even if you're not busy, we could actually hook up for a drink. 100K. I don't collect. Collect number, BB pin, secure date, everything confirmed. I entered the banking hall, deposited 95,000 naira. Carry my 5,000 naira. I go watch my film. Try it, it works like magic, you won't believe it.